Hi guys, today we are going to use Excel to graph the frequency table for some data. I would like to ask you a question before I start. How many types of data we know? Can you answer me please? Hello. How many types of data we have? Four, Four. 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 Sure? Four? Three. I think. Go down. Two. Go down. Two. Yes. Two data. Yeah. What is the type of data, the two data? What is the name of them? Excellent, Thomas. Excellent. So before we start to know the graph, the best graph. On our data, we have to know what is the type of our data. It is qualitative or quantitative, right? Okay. This is the Excel. Each uh, Excel sheet, you will see this one. If you press home, you have the basic and you have type and this one. Next, we will go for insert to graph or something, right? To write a formula to have a data and we activate the data analysis last time, right? And I think all of you are familiar with this one. Okay. This is here the number of uh, cell. It means the column number C and the row number four. And here you adding or making any mathematical calculation. And as we know, we have to read, uh, press equal before we making any mathematical operation okay once we finish writing the formula mathematical formula you press enter you will get the answer here like to add a4 plus a5 in this cell press enter you will get the result as a seven right if you would like to shade this two cell you will say i'm shading from column c row number 10 to uh, column e and row 11. Here you can add more sheets and also you can rename the sheets just to indicate what you are going to do in this sheet, right? This is the main question. How to choose the right chart or graph for your data? We have many types of graph. We have the, the pie chart, and we have the bar chart, and we have something called, we call it polygon. In Arabic, we call the pie chart, al-rasm al-da'iri, or rasm al qurs Bar chart, or rasm bil amida Polygon, al-mudalla al-tikrari. Okay. And we have a new one called Parito chart. Parito is an Italian professor of economic. He made a theory called 2080. What does it mean 2080? We will see this one later on, okay? Okay, so if you said the buy chart and bar chart for, and this one for the quantitative data. So if the pie chart is okay, why I'm going to do the bar chart? I'm saying, no, this one is not okay when you have more than one, category very close in the frequency, right? So you can distinguish between them if you are looking to. But in this case, I'm not going to, to use the pie chart if I have more than one category having very close frequency. I prefer to go for the bar because if you have very trivial difference between the columns, like here, I can recognize, but I cannot recognize by in the pie chart. Okay. Also, the main difference, the pie chart using the total number of the frequency. But in the bar chart, I don't care about the total number of frequency. This is the difference between pie chart and bar chart. So you prefer the bar chart when you have more than one category having very close frequency. Okay. The second difference. In the bar chart, you don't 
use the total number of frequency, but in the pie chart, you use the total number of frequency and each category represented by its percentage of the total number, right? Uh, the Pareto chart, I will show it to you right now. This is a Pareto chart, right? Also, this is different between the pie chart and par chart. Why it is different? Because the table I'm going to use for the pie chart and par chart, it doesn't matter. The frequency are sorted from the maximum to the minimum or from the, the smallest to the largest or from the largest to the smallest. But for Pareto chart, my date table frequency table must be sorted or organize it from the bigger the big biggest frequency to the smallest frequency. Not only this, Pareto chart is the only chart having two vertical axes. Why two vertical axes? One for the frequency and the other one for the percentage. So it is a combination between pie chart and bar chart. Not only this, extra to this one, he will have the cumulative frequency, relative frequency. Why cumulative frequency? Because the theory of Pareto is 2080. It means 20% of any uh, problems is the crucial one. So this is the main point for Pareto chart, and we will see this one with the example later on, right? So now, how many charts do we know? We know the pie charts, okay? And bar chart, as well as pie chart, right? So we will know how to make bar chart and we have how to make polygon and how to make uh, pie chart and how to make bar chart, uh, Pareto chart, okay? Now let's go for our Excel uh, file. Now how to, if you have frequency table, ready-made frequency table, so you are ready to graph straightforward. If you don't have, you can make the table from the raw data, right? If I shade this one, could you please shade this table with me? And you go for insert, and you go for the pie, okay? And you go for this one. Once you click this one, you will have the option to choose the best one for this one. The best one is the one has a percentage, right? Not only this one, if you go down here, you have Better one. What is a better one? To know the name of this section and its percentage, right? Okay. So now you know this. This is the percentage of each one, right? Catch it. The main point of the Excel, he gave you the percentage straightforward. No need to calculate it, right? If you would like to have the percentage and the frequency at the same time, so you have to add column over here, right? I'll go here. Then the percentage is called in statistics relative frequency. So once you hear relative, it means percentage. How to calculate the uh, percentage? To calculate the percentage, you have to have to find the total. How to find the total? Calculate anything in Excel, you have to press equal first, and then go for the function, and you choose sum. If you don't choose, you know where is sum. In this one, you just type sum, and you press go, it will give you where is the sum, right? Press OK, it will ask you which one you would like to sum. I would like to sum this for cells. So he's he adding from F3, this one, 
to f six, which is this one. Now, if I press OK, I will get the result here. I can put it in the middle from here. Now, I would like to have the relative frequency. Again, the relative frequency is called what? Percentage, right? Okay. How to find the percentage? I know how to find the percentage. Press equal and press this one and divide it. Okay. This sign for division, I divide it by 90. Okay. If I press this one and press, it will give you the percentage, the first percentage. I would like to write this one as a percentage. I click the percentage. You change this number into the percentage. If I get this one, I drag it to down, I will not have the calculation for the rest. Why I don't have the calculation for the rest? Because my 90 is not corresponding to each one of these, right? So what I'm going to do, sometimes they're calling to have to fix this one. So you can put dollar sign before the column and after the column, right? And press equal. Now, if you drag this one down, sorry. If you drag this one, you will have the percentage, okay? So, I need the frequency in the beginning. Muhammad, please, can you show me how to graph a new pie chart and bar chart? Yes. You, you shade the three columns, Muhammad. You shade the three columns. Yes, excellent. Insert. Okay. Do you think this is the right part, Shahat Muhammad? Do you think I have it like this? No, doctor. So please do it one by one. Just click it, right click and cut. Yes, now it's okay. Make it bigger. One minute, sir. No, you have only two pieces. Yeah. Again, click, right click and cut. Okay, shade it please again. You shade the from attitude. Don't shade from down. Yes. Excellent. Right. Insert. Go for insert. Go for the bar chart cluster. Yes, this is the right one. Okay. Let's choose the first one. Thank you. Uh, excellent. Can you make it taller, please? And choose the one with the number. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet. Not this one. Not this one. The one with the number in the column. This one, doctor. Can you see a number in the column, percentage or frequency? No. Go for this the one. black one. Yes, excellent. This is the right one. Thank you. Excellent. Can you go for the pie chart similar to this one? Yes. If you make it taller, Muhammad, you just from the border and go to take it down or drag it down or up just to. From here, Muhammad, from the middle, from the middle, just drag it down. No, from the middle. You know this circle? This circle in the corners and in the middle? Yeah. على البوردر يا ابني من برا من برا مش جوه الرسم من برا الحدود اللي من برا ايوه اسحبها كده ايوه ايوه كمان انا اسحبها فوق وتحت عشان تبان لي النسب اللي تحت اللي بيبقى ايوه هنا ايوه اكسلنت تمام تمام ثانك يو سو ماتش ثانك يو كود يو بليز Graph the pie chart after making the decimal. So you just including the uh, attitude and the number of students and also the relative frequency. Please, Muhammad, 
call this column relative frequency or percentage. Don't leave it off. Yes, excellent. Thank you. Yes. Can you make a border for this column, Mohammed, before you start making the, the last column? Yes, you shade it. Shade it, Mohammed. Yes, click, right click. Right click. Format border. Format cells down. Yes. Go for border. Again, Muhammad. Again, please. Take your time. Format cells, border, click out, outline and inside. Yes, this one and that's the next one. Excellent, press okay. Now, okay, excellent. No, you have extra column. You just stop at the relative frequency, right? You have three column on. Excellent. Insert. Okay. Which one you would like to choose here? Excellent. This is the right one. Thank you so much. Thank you. How to make the pie chart? And I would like to show the percentage and the frequency at the same time, right? So I shade it. I go for insert. I choose the pie chart and I did choose this one. This is the best. No, not, not this is the best. Yes, I can get a name inside. Okay. But double click in here. Okay. Oh, it counts. This is how, this is how to control it. Okay. So, where is um, where is it? So, don't forget you have to press again. They give you two options. Yes. Yes. Where is the two option? Yeah. Inside this one, I have to double click, right? And I should go for this one. Okay. I would like to have the value here just to input the value. This is the point. Okay. How it comes, this one? Looking at the edge. Okay. So now, I guess I would like to choose this one, right? Double click in here. What is the value we have it last time? No, no, doctor, you have to press on the text on the on the chart, not on the. Oh yeah, in the percent, in the yeah, value. Yeah, yeah. yeah, in the value. Sorry, sorry, this is my mistake. So double click here. Okay. Where is the value here? Where is the option value? Here, in this scale here, right? So and you press value, okay? Thank you very much. Clear now? Guys, is it clear? Okay. Yes, Dr. Shukran. Can we can we do the pie chart in the bar chart in the same way? Okay. I will get this one. I go insert bar chart. Okay. They give me the percentage and this one as well, right? I would like to choose the one with the number in each one. Now, the percentage is very small. How to make it clear and just make this one bigger, right? Okay, it gave me this percentage start to be clear. Or I can change the scale here. If I go here and I change my scale here, right? Okay, or I can go for add and then go for 
secondary. Axis, data, data label, okay. Now, this is a percentage. So I have each one and its percentage down here. So you have to, you can play with this option to, to, to see what's going on here. And you choose the best for your research or for your work, okay. At least now we can have it uh, with the, I don't accept, any bar chart or pie chart without the details in the graph, right? And also without the title for the, for the chart. If you don't have title here, you have nothing, right? So this is called attitude. So I have to, to change it into the name. No chart without title or caption as they call it, right? Attitude of the students. Our statistics. So yes, you can write title for here. Okay. Now we finish the buy shop well, and push. Smile, Victor. Pareto chart for balance, chart, and line graph. Our data have two columns, item category and sales. It's very important to put sales in descending order to create a Pareto chart. Click one of the entries in column B. And from home tab, find short and filtered button. Always want to short largest to shorter. We also want a total at the bottom of sales. Go to B9, click auto sums, enter, and the total is ready. Okay, now we must create a new column to calculate the cumulative total. Cumulative and slide over the first cell C2. For refreshments, the entry is the same, so type equal B2 and enter. But for the other entries, we want to put in the previous cumulative plus the latest entry. So type in equal C2. Plus B3 and enter. Double click at the corner of cell C2 and see all the cumulative cells. We have to create another one column called percent. It will calculate the cumulative entry divided by total. Go to D2 and type, and type in equal C2 divided by B9. Because we want to use B9 over and over again, we have to make it an absolute address. So press F4 and enter. Slide the cell down. Finally, press the percent style button to format them as a percent. We are ready to create our chart. We don't want to include cumulative column, so we highlight only this data. Go to insert tab and let's try first the recommended charts. The first chart is exactly what we want, cluster column line on secondary axis. Press OK. Better to add the label to line so we can see the percent exactly. Click on line and from design tab go to add chart elements and select 
the take the labels in below. The conclusion is that the first three item categories, refreshment, spirits, and mineral water, represents almost 8% of our total sales. Thanks for watching. MHS stands for Morgan Arun Sachs, which is the world's number one pretend finance company. Come with me. Hi, today I'm going to cover how to create a Pareto chart. Now, Pareto chart is a good visual example of the 80-20 principle or the Pareto principle. And this was named after a Italian economist back in the 19th century. His name was Wilfredo Pareto, and he had noticed that 80% of the land was owned by 20% of the people. And this concept can also apply to many things nowadays. Uh, you may hear that 20% of the people own or produce 80% of the wealth or etc. And usually this, this principle kind of applies pretty much around the ballpark of 20 to 80, 30 to 70, uh, 40 to 60. But it's all, it's a very useful concept to kind of understand what items cause most of the effects. So basically 80% of the effects are, are coming from 20% of the cause of something. So we can use it in maybe like our age, our, our, our daily life to see where most of our expenses are going to. So here is an example of a chart that indicates where, what our expenses are, and these are daily expenses, rent, car payment, groceries, et cetera, and which items are basically the bulk of all our expenses. And we can see here, as we go down the, the chart here from left to right, what's our most expensive, or most costly expenses, we see that, 80% of all our major costs are, are rent, car payment, and groceries. And so I'll show you how to create this graph in just a minute. Let's go to a new slide. Well, first, let's kind of just copy some things here so it make it a little bit uh, more easy so we don't type everything up. I'll just put that over here. And then maybe we will put some new amounts, let's say, uh, Put them out there. Let me double click this to kind of auto fit that. Let's say our rent was uh, $1,500. Our car payment is $500. Our grocery was $300. Our gas, now, now let's say that our gas is really expensive nowadays. We bought a big SUV. Now it's $400. Our mobile phone payment is 100 bucks. Our cable is 60 bucks. One thing we need to do before we start any type of charting is to make sure that the amounts are sorted in descending order from the uh, greatest amount to the least amount. So what we can do here is just go click into any cell, right click, click sort, and then sort from largest to smallest. And you'll see that Excel, uh, this is Excel 2007, it's picking up the sorts and sorting them accordingly. What we also need to do here is enter in the amount, the total amount. So we can just click down in the bottom of the cell. I like to use keyboard shortcuts when you just press the Alt key and the equal sign, and it's gonna pick up and sum the cells right above it. So you see that we've got, we're, we're summing B2 to B7. So for the total amount, I want to just click enter. There we go. That's gonna give us our total amount there. What we need to do next is put in the cumulative amount row. So basically, as the cells go down, it's going to add up the amounts um, from cell to cell. So this cell, we're just going to make it equal to 1,500 here. But for this cell, the second cell here, we're going to need to add this amount, the car payment, plus the preceding amount. So we'll just go ahead and click B. 
plus C2. And then I'm going to press Control Enter to leave uh, my box selected here where I took it. Now we can all, what we can do here is now we can grab onto the fill handle here, just copy it down. And what it's going to do is it'll copy the formulas down because they're not absolute formulas. There's no dollar signs above it. So once it gets copied down from one cell to the next cell, it'll just pick up the corresponding cells. And we see here, once it gets down to the bottom, it's added up all the amounts here. And that should equal to the total there because that is the total. The next thing that we want to do is we want to percentage up. We want to get a percentage of this to the total. So let's just label this called cumulative percent. We'll just give that a shortcut. Double click that to autofill. And what we need to do is have this amount divided by the total. So let's just do equal 1500 divided by the total. Well, the total, what we want to do is we want to lock down that cell, make it an absolute cell reference. So I'm going to run press F4 and make sure the dollar signs are in front of the B and the A, the letter and the number. And when that gets copied down, that cell reference doesn't change, but this cell reference will. So I'll go ahead and press Control Enter and go ahead and actually just, I don't need to like click and hold this to spread it down. I can just double click this fill handle here. Now it's brought it all the way down. What I want to do is also make this into a percentage. So I can go ahead and just go ahead and click this percentage side or, or look, there's a shortcut key here. Control shift percent. I like shortcuts. So I'll make that control shift percent. There we go. So now we've got our basis for a chart. What I'm going to do is select my columns here and I'll press the Alt F1 key that automatically creates a de the, whatever default chart you have in your Excel application within this particular tab. So press Alt F1, see we have a nice little chart here. So some of the things I can get rid of, I don't need this cumulative amount. So what I'm gonna do is right click in the, in the chart and go to select data. Once I select data, I'm just gonna remove that cumulative amount. That's, not, that's something I need for the chart. Once I've gotten that out of the way, click OK. But look, the cumulative percentage is nowhere to be seen because it's a percentage and these are, these are integers. So these numbers are probably very, very low. So how am I going to select that? Well, there's a couple ways, but there's an easy way here when you click into the, into the chart tools contextual uh, tab. If we click on either the layout or format, we can go here in the current selection and select our cumulative percentage. That's our series. It's one of the series that we have. There's another way you can do it. When you, when you click in the chart, you can use the arrow key. And, and as I click, as I, as I press the up or down arrow, or maybe not the down arrow, we notice that in the current selection, it selects the uh, area. And so you can also notice that when that's being done, the area here, we can see the selection. So what we want to do for that when we select it is we can just hover over it and right click, change chart series type. We want to change that to a line. And it's nice to have the line with markers so we see which parts are, uh, which percentage parts a little bit more, or um, is visible. Click OK. Here we have our cumulative percentage. But we notice here, this cumulative percentage is all still down here. That's because what we need to do is put it on its own uh, vertical axis. So this vertical axis is based on the integers. We need another vert vertical axis for the percentages. So I can go ahead and just right click again and go to Format Data Series and select Plot the Series on a Secondary Axis. So it's going to put another axis here. See, now we've got our percentage axis. I really don't like these lines here. So I'm going to just delete that to select it. Uh, right click, delete, or you just press the delete key. I just press the delete key to get rid of that. Now we have this nice chart. It's kind of telling us uh, where about 80% of all our expenses are due to rent, car payment, and gas. It just gives you a nice visual cue 
let's say that we want to kind of have a better have an additional visual cue that, that just gives us a line where the 80 percent is well what we can do is we can say uh, i can put a column here that says 80 percentage uh, marker and then just put a 80 percent here just copy copy that down what i can do is i can select this column Control c to copy and here just select anywhere within the chart Control v to paste and we see it's put it in there so it's kind of a nice feature that you can easily copy a series of data into the chart but without going to the chart and i like to kind of change this instead of having those markers there make that just a straight line here we have our 80 percent mark so we knew that we now we know that the cross section between our expenses hit the 80 percent is right here so here's how to create a Pareto chart hope that helps thanks for watching at the VM Hage. فهمنا دكتور طيب يلا كده حد يعمل شير معانا ويعمل لنا الباريتو شارد بتاعت الداتا بتاعتنا مين؟ مش لازم اختار مش لازم اختار حد احنا عايزين متطوعين في الاول مين؟ اتفضل يا ابني أنا هعمل أشيل الشير بتاعي وأنت اعمل شير معانا وخطوة خطوة ومش عيب نغلط نصلح شيل ال... شيل الرسمة دي يا محمد شيل ال... لا شيلها من من الفريم اللي بره وكنت وباليمين وكاب تمام قبل ما نبدا يا محمد هل الـ 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 الجدول ده ينفع لباريتو؟ محمد محمد لا دكتور ايوه يبقى لازم اعمل جدول جديد لباريتو تمام؟ صح ولا لا؟ تحت الجدول ده اعمل جدول ثاني تحته اعمل جدول تاني تحت دولة اعمل جدول تاني اعمل كوبي بيست اعمل كوبي بيست للحاجة اللي انت عايزها لا بس سيب 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 سطر بين الاثنين اعمل فاصل بين الاثنين لا مش كوبي بيست كده يا محمد احنا قلنا هنرتبه من الاكبر للاصغر صح؟ خد العنوان في الاول بتاع العمود يا محمد اللي هو اتيتيود تاوردز كذا راح فين؟ اتيتيود يا ابني خد العنوان بس العنوان بس مش عايز انا ال ال ايوه بس دي السله دي بس كنترول سي اعمل كوبي كنترول سي اعمل كوبي تمام سيب فاصل بينه وما بين اللي تحت وروح للخليه اللي بعديها واعمل بيست تمام بيست تمام هنا هتعمل ايه؟ هتعمل ال ترتبهم من الاكبر للاصغر صح ولا لا؟ تكتب فريكونسي لا ما ينفعش كده دول تحت عنوان نمبر اوف ستودنتس هات العنوان برضه وحطه بيست قصاد الاتيتيود كنترول سي تعمل كوبي كنترول في تعمل بيست العنوان تمام جنبه يلا كده اختار اكبر واحده هي مين 46 46 مقابلة لمين؟ للايك. احط لي لايك هنا. وقصادها اعمل كوبي ل 46. تمام. انا عايزك تستخدم كوبي بيست افضل ما تكتب من جديد. الاصغر منها 23. اللي هي لاف كنترول سي. ليه بتنسخ الكتاب؟ انسخ السيل كلها يا ابني. عشان تنزل بنفس التنسيق. ظل الليل باقيين يا ابني هنرتبهم يا حبيبي هنرتبهم من الاكبر للاصغر الله يهديك دكتور في اوبشن صوت 
ستاندنج ماشي آه خلاص بص انا مش عارف. في الاول لما تتعلم السواقه بلاش تطلع على 120 الله يرضى عليك ماشي بس ناخد الرخصه ان شاء الله والامور تمشي زي الفل انا هوريك سورتنج ازاي دلوقتي بكل بساطه بس مع واحد تاني بحكي بعد ما خلص انت مش عارف ليه مصر تنسخ الكتابه انت بتنسخ السن زي ما هي تمام كده اعمل لهم بوردر يا محمد ايوه تمام شوف جاب البوردر ازاي حلوه تمام ممتاز وبعدين جنب دي هتعمل ايه؟ جنب في عمود تاني فريتو عايز عمود تاني يا محمد العمود التاني بتاع الكوميوليتيف فريكونسي كوميوليتيف فريكونسي كلمة كوم بس بس كوم ها ماشي عايز تكتبها كاملة اوكي What does it mean cumulative frequency? You write the first one as it is, 46, right? And then here you press equal and press 23 plus 46. 23 plus, yes, press enter. Now this one, equal, 12 plus 69. Yes, excellent. 9 plus 81. Yes, the last number is the total of your frequency, right? Otherwise, you need a percentage, Muhammad. You need another another column for the percentage, right? So now, relative frequency. This one, they call it relative frequency or percentages, as I'd like. But I would like to re remind you, once you hear Relative, it means percent. One you hear, once you hear relative, it means a percent. How to make the percentage, Muhammad? You just press equal. You would like to have the 46 percent, okay? Over the total, that is the total. Okay. Now press the percentage. Go up. Okay. If you drag it now, you will not have the right answer. من الكورنر يا ابني يا حبيبي من الكورنر يا محمد ارجع تاني يا ابني من الكورنر اللي على اليمين ده هو أيوة حط الزائد عليه واسحب تمام كده بس ما طلعتش حاجة ليه ما طلعتش حاجة قلنا هتحط دولار ساين قبل الإي تمام عند الخانة الأولانية حط دولار ساين قبل الإي وبعد الإي الإي اللي بعد علامة القسمة يا على مهلك ايوه دولار ساين ودولار ساين بعديها تمام تعمل انتر تمام دلوقتي لو تروحت عند الكورنر اللي هو اللي على اليمين من تحت ده وسحبت هتطلع النسب عندك تمام زي ما هم مظللين ظللهم وروح على علامه برسنت اللي هي فوق واضغط عليها عشان يحولها لبرسنتج تمام شكرا لي تمام ممتاز لغايه هنا تمام ممتاز يا ابني ظللنا كده وبعدين هنروح على انسرت اوكي ماشي يلا كده باريتو كده الجدول جاهز لباريتو باريتو مش عايز الصف اللي في النص يا عم او خليه اعمله بعدين نشيله ما فيش مشكله ظلل كده تمام روح انسرت نفس فكره البار شارت بالضبط ايوه تمام آه هو بلاقيها بالريكومندد تشارت اه افضل افضل ممتاز يا ابني ممتاز افضل ان انا اروح لايه ريكومند تشارت واختار باريتو تشارت افضل لاني مره واحده بدل متعبه جدا انك انت تعملها 
ايه اللي انت عايزه في البار شارت دلوقتي وايه اللي مش عايزه يا محمد؟ اللي باللون الازرق عايزه في اللي باللون الاور البرتقالي عايزه في شيء؟ لا دكتور لا دكتور بس ممكن تشيله لا لازم تشيله من التيبل نفسه ما راح اي لا هو هنا او من هنا من من روح اعلم عليها اللي بالاورنج ده عباره عن ايه؟ عباره عن الفريكونسي صح؟ نمبر اوف ستودنتس اوكي شيل النمبر اوف ستودنتس شغل لي اسم يا محمد شويه ابن الله يرضى عليك عايز اغير السكيل يا محمد بتاع ال ال الواي اكسس الرايت والليفت يلا كده دبل كليك عليه ايوه فورمات اول بدايه بتاعته زيرو وتحت 1 1 بس بدل 1.2 اعملها 1 فوق يا محمد 1.2 تشينج ات انتو 1 1 وتحت ممكن تمشي 10% 1% اعملها 0.1 افضل بدل ما يمشي 20% تمام ممتاز اوكي خلاص عايز ال 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 برضه ال الاكس الناحيه الثانيه المقياس الناحيه الثانيه اخر حاجه عندي كانت 90 مظبوط ولا 100 اخر حاجه 90 فعلا هاي اخر شيء 90 عندي عملت فيه ايه يا محمد؟ تمام ممكن تكتب لي تايتل يا محمد لل... قبل ما ننزل تايتل باريتو شارت اسمه باريتو شارت كليك هنا على التكست واكتب باريتو شارت دكتور بس شلون نخلي انا الثكنس هوايه مال الاشياء؟ على جنب كده اللي هي فيها الزائد دي بتقدر هنا اهو بتقدر تتحكم في الثكنس تخليه آه اكبر اصغر تتحكم في الاعمده. وين على جنب دكتور؟ حاضر بس اقفل التسجيل و...